Hey, fellow expeditionists, we're at one of our favorite places here in Indiana, Shade State Park. And we're hiking to Pine Hills Nature Preserve. That's right, we are hoping to check out the great fall colors. Pine Hills Nature Preserve is a national natural landmark and the first dedicated nature preserve in Indiana. The preserve encompasses 470 acres located at the east end of Shade State Park. The upper section of the preserve was once a pine plantation, planted with white pine, scotch pine, jack pine, and Norway spruce. Further along, the former pine plantation gives way to old growth deciduous trees including sugar maple, red oak, tulip poplar, and hickory, along with naturally occurring white pine and hemlock. So we have been coming to Pine Hills Nature Preserve for probably about a dozen years now. It is one of our favorite places in the entire state. It's a great, I still consider it a hidden gem personally, because when we were coming here back in 2008, 2009, somewhere in there, almost nobody knew about it. Even though it was right beside Shade State Park, it wasn't technically included with the state park, so not that many people knew about it. You had to park outside of the park to even hike into here at that time. Um, obviously, a lot of people have discovered it since then and is now included in all the trail maps for the state park, so it is no longer truly hidden, but it is still for us yeah. kind of a hidden gem. So there's no official trail up to it, but that cut in the ridge right there, is a, uh, that is the mill cut backbone. In 1870, the Pine Hill Woolen Mill Company was built here. It was a water-powered mill that spun thread from raw wool. However, the mill was not successful and was ultimately moved in 1873. All that remains is the notch cut in the backbone. Unfortunately, with this being a nature preserve, they're very strict, of course, on staying on trail. And so we try to play by those rules, obviously. Um, but once upon a time, there were trails all on that backbone. You can still see the remnants of the trails when you go up to the Devil's Backbone. And you can look off to the opposite side, and you can see that there was once a trail that led all the way up to the Mill Cut Backbone. This is probably one of our favorite creeks to go creeking on, just walking down along the water. Of course, it's very, very low right now, so it makes it really easy to walk through. We're coming up on an area that's known as the slide. So you'll see a lot of what I consider slate rock down here in the creek bed. And most of that is just uh, erosion where the little canyon walls here slowly dissolves and breaks off. Usually the ice in the winter will break off some, and especially in the springtime when it's all collected. At the base of this hill, the side of the creek, you'll find just big old piles of the slate rock. So the ridge straight ahead of us here, that is Devil's Backbone. It is the signature feature here at Pine Hills. It is about 100 feet high and about six feet wide. And the interesting thing is that underneath it here is way thinner. This thing is darn near an arch. It's just waiting to poke through. So 
Yeah, we are directly below Devil's Backbone. You can see how far it actually comes out from the side. Like I say, that top ridge there, it's only six feet wide. So how much more does this wall here have to go before it actually breaks through and becomes an arch? So here's the backbone. And there's a lot of carvings on the top of this. Some of them dating to more than a hundred years old. Once upon a time, there was a carving of a devil's head up here. And that is how this got the name, Devil's Backbone. The Devil's Backbone is not only noteworthy for its height and narrowness, but also for the stone carvings along its top. The devil carving from which the backbone got its name was carved in 1910, but there are other carvings that date back to the mid-1800s. The many bird carvings are believed to be of the now extinct passenger pigeon. So catfish, this is honeycomb rock right in front of us, isn't it? Yep. This is probably the second best known feature here at Pine Hills. Pretty easy to see why they call it honeycomb rock, huh? Yeah. We're down along Indian Creek right now on the opposite side of the uh, Devil's Backbone Ridge. Now normally, walking where I'm at right now, we would be probably knee deep in water. But this has been a very, very dry fall. Some pretty interesting rock formations on this backbone as well, huh? Yeah. See, that right there is a devil's backbone where it's only six feet wide. Still say sometime within the next few hundred years, it will be an arch. The creek is extremely shallow right now. And I know it's kind of hard to tell with the uh, leaf coverage on the ground, but it is one of my favorite creeks for looking for fossils and geodes and such. It's really a, just a superb place for that. It looks like somebody's already left some geodes right here. Right here's an awesome example of a fossil. Looks like it's most likely some kind of crinoid. Crinoids are probably the most common fossil that we see out here. It's a rock carn gate. Hmm. What's the one thing we don't have to worry about here, catfish? Venomous snake. This is probably the most crowded I've ever seen Pine Hills. But on the other hand, I've never been out here during the fall for the leaf change. So I guess I don't really know how many people usually come out at that time. But it's still my favorite nature preserve in Indiana. That is our little hike today around Pine Hills Nature Preserve here at Shade State Park. What would you think of it today, Catfish? I thought it was pretty there. Like, all the cliffs were cool and the tree change. Yep. Got lots of colors. Lots of yellows out there, wasn't there? Yeah. Yep. So, it's still kind of early in the leaf color change, but I really liked what we saw. And uh, as you can see behind us, it's just beautiful out here. Yeah, it but is. Until next time, folks. Peace, Peace out. out.